In this video, we will be replacing the brush and brush holder on the Brindley 42-inch Lawn Sweeper, model LS240BHG. Note, the steps in this video also apply to the Brindley 42-inch Lawn Sweeper Silver Edition, model LS242BHS. To replace a brush section, you will only need a rubber mallet and gloves. To replace a brush holder, you will need a 7 16 inch wrench and socket, a flat tip screwdriver, and a pair of retaining ring pliers. You will need a pair of retaining ring pliers to remove and replace the retaining ring back onto the brush axle. First, we will replace a brush section. Stand the sweeper upright in a storage position as shown. Now, using a rubber mallet, tap the metal rail of the brush section towards the outside. This will loosen the brush section from the brush holders. Note, it may be necessary to have a second person hold the sweeper in place while pulling the brush section free. Then, wearing work gloves, firmly grasp the brush section between the brush holders and pull the brush section to the center until it is free from both brush holders. Then inspect the brush section and notice which side has the short bristles near the metal rail of the brush section. It is important that the new brush section is assembled in the same orientation. The short bristles on the brush section must be oriented as shown. Now align the metal rail of the new brush section with the groove on the inside of the brush holder. Then tap the brush section into the brush holder using the rubber mallet. Continue to tap the brush section into the first brush holder then be sure to align the metal rail of the brush section with the groove on the second brush holder. Tap the brush section into both brush holders until the metal rail aligns with the remaining two brush sections or about a finger width or half inch from the brush housing side panel. Now turn your brush assembly and confirm there is no contact between the metal rail of the brush section and the brush housing side panel. If there is contact between the edge of the brush section and the brush housing panel, pull the brush section to the right until there is about a half inch or finger width between the brush edge and the brush section and the brush assembly spins freely. Repeat as needed for any remaining brush sections that need replacing. Next, we will be replacing a brush holder. To replace a brush holder, you will need a 7 16 inch wrench and socket, a flat tip screwdriver, a pair of needle nose pliers, and a pair of retaining ring pliers. You will need a pair of retaining ring pliers to remove and replace the retaining ring back onto the brush axle. First, using pliers, unbend and remove the cotter pin at the end of the wheel. Remove the washers from the end of the axle and remove the wheel. Inspect the back side of the wheel gear and the wheel axle hole for any damage or wear and tear. Then remove the retaining ring from the recess in the drive pinion gear using retaining ring pliers. Then remove the flat washer and drive pinion. Note, cup one hand under the drive pinion during the removal as the dowel pin will fall free. Note that the bottom of this gear has either an R or an L embossed into it, indicating either the right or left drive pinion. To check for wear and tear, check the inside of the pinion gears to see if the catch that keeps the brushes from spinning backwards has worn down, located just behind the L or R engraving, as shown here. Also be sure to check the dowel pin to see if it has significant wear and tear, which could also cause the pinion gear to stop catching and motivating the brushes forward. If the drive pinion or the dowel pin have significant wear and tear, replace them with new ones. Replacement parts can be ordered at the Brindley Parts Store on shop.brindley.com. If the pinion gear and dowel pin don't have significant wear and tear, be sure to clean them with a small paper towel or rag so they operate freely. Then, remove the large flat washer, inspect and clean the washer and the area around the brush axle. Then, remove the dust cover. The dust cover clips in in three places and slides out. Then, remove the E-ring using a medium flat tip screwdriver and remove the lock nuts securing the bearing retainer using a 7 16 inch wrench. To remove the wheel axle, simply slide it back through the hole in the side plate to move it out of your way so your wrench can spin freely. Then remove the bearing retainer. To free the axle completely, repeat these steps on the other side. Removing the cotter pin from the end of the axle, 
sliding off the washers and the wheel, removing the retaining ring, cupping your hand under the pinion gear, and catching the washer and pin if it drops out of the axle hole, using a flathead screwdriver to pry off the E-ring, sliding the dust cover off of the clips to release it, and removing the bearing retainer using a 7 16 inch wrench. After the bearing retainer is removed, you can now freely slide the axle out to access the brush holders. Using pliers, unbend and remove the cotter pins to release the brush holders from the axle. Using gloves, slide the brushes out of both holders and use the new brush holder to slide the brushes back into. Notice which side of the brush holder as a whole. And when you slide the brush holder back over the axle, make sure the sides with the holes are all facing in the same direction. Slide the brush holder over the axle, lining up the hole in the axle with the hole in the brush holder. Note, when adding the second set of three brushes to the axle, make sure the brushes are not lined up with the first set of brushes when aligned with the hole in the axle. If the brushes are aligned, then the second brush holder needs to be rotated 180 degrees so the brushes are set to alternating positions but the holes still align. Then, when the holes are lined up in both the brush holder and axle, slide the straightened cotter pin back through the brush holder and axle securing it in place. Slide the second brush holder onto the axle, making sure the hole in the holder is aligned with the hole in the axle, and the arms are in the same position as the first brush holder. Then, insert the cotter pin through the holder and the axle, and bend the end with pliers to secure both brush holders in place. After the brush holders are in place on the axle, you can place the axle back in the holder. First, look at the brush section and notice that one side has short bristles close to the base. Make sure the short bristle side of the brushes are all facing the same direction when inserting them into the brush holders. Then, using gloves, slide the brushes back into the first brush holder, starting from the center, and tap lightly with a mallet to advance the brush down the holder. Then guide it through the second brush holder and continue to tap the brush until it is securely in both holders. We will adjust the exact position of the brushes in the holders more accurately after the axle is resecured into place. Repeat this step with the other two brush holders. After making sure the short bristles are all on the same side, from the center sliding the rail into the first brush holder and tapping with a mallet until it is securely in the second brush holder. And now we will reassemble the wheels back into place. First, insert your bearing retainer back onto the brush axle. The bearing retainer should fit flush on the lower pivot side plate with the bearing retainer flange fitting inside the hole from the lower pivot side plate and the hole inside the brush housing. Take care when placing the new bearing retainer so that the carriage bolts remain in the lower pivot side plate. Then assemble the three lock nuts securing the bearing retainer and fully tighten all three lock nuts using a 7 16 inch wrench. Then snap the E-ring back into place on the brush axle. You may want to use a flathead screwdriver to snap the E-ring into place. The E-ring will make a snap when fully engaged. Then place the dust cover back onto the side panel by lining up the three tabs on the dust cover with the three slots in the side panel and pushing it upwards until it snaps in place. Now replace the large flat washer onto the brush axle until it touches the bearing retainer. Then turn the brush axle so that the dowel pin hole is horizontal with the ground. Make sure to double check that you have the R or L pinion correctly installed. Then insert either the new or cleaned drive pinion onto the brush axle until it touches the large flat washer. The dowel pin will now be inside of the drive pinion. Now insert the flat washer over the brush axle and onto the recess on the drive pinion. Then assemble the retaining ring back onto the axle using retaining ring pliers as shown here. Make sure the retaining ring is fully engaged with the groove in the brush axle. Now turn the pinion gear to make sure it catches in the counterclockwise direction, but spins freely in the clockwise direction to spin the brushes forward, but not backwards. While holding the wheel axle on the inside of the brush housing, insert the wheel onto the wheel axle. Note, the wheel may have to be turned slightly to engage the wheel gear with the drive pinion gear. Replace the machine bushings and slide the cotter pin back through the end of the axle, bending the end with pliers to secure the wheel in place. 
Hold the brush axle from the inside so the axle doesn't turn while bending the pin. Then repeat this same step for the other side of the wheel and drive gear service. Inserting the bearing retainer onto the brush axle, making sure it fits flush on the lower pivot side plate with the bearing retainer, the flange fitting inside the hole in the lower pivot side plate and the hole in the brush housing. Assemble the three lock nuts securing the bearing retainer and tighten all three nuts with a 9 16th inch wrench. Snap the E-ring into place using a flathead screwdriver if necessary, and be sure it snaps to be fully engaged onto the brush axle. Assemble the dust cover onto the lower pivot side plate, then place the dust cover back onto the side panel by lining up the three tabs on the dust cover with the three slots in the side panel and pushing it upwards until it snaps in place. Replace the large flat washer onto the brush axle until it touches the brushing retainer. Then turn the brush axle so the dowel pin hole is horizontal with the ground and insert the dowel pin into the hole on the brush axle. Then insert the drive pinion onto the brush axle until it touches the large flat washer. Insert the flat washer over the brush axle and into the recess of the drive pinion and assemble the retaining ring onto the brush axle using retaining ring pliers as shown here. Making sure the retaining ring is fully engaged with the groove on the brush axle. Then, replace the wheel axle from the inside of the brush housing. And while holding the wheel axle on the inside of the brush housing, insert the wheel onto the wheel axle. The wheel may have to be turned slightly to engage the wheel gear with the drive pinion gear. Replace the machine bushings and slide the cotter pin back through the end of the axle, bending the end with pliers to secure the wheel in place. Your Brindley sweeper should now be reassembled. Now turn your brush assembly and confirm there is no contact between the metal rail of the brush section and the brush housing side panel. If there is contact between the edge of the brush section and the brush housing panel, pull the brush section to the right until there is about a half inch or finger width between the brush edge and the brush section and the brush assembly spins freely. Repeat as needed for any remaining brush sections that need replacing. It may be necessary to adjust the hamper stop so that the hamper assembly remains clear of the ground. To adjust the hamper stop, loosen but do not remove the two nuts securing each side of the hamper stop. The rear mounting holes are slotted, allowing the hamper stop to be pivoted up or down for adjustment. Move the hamper stop up or down to adjust the resting position of the hamper assembly so that it is approximately level. Then tighten the nuts on each side to secure the hamper stop in position. The sweeper tow tubes should be parallel with the ground or angled slightly forward when the sweeper is connected to the towing vehicle. If your hitch is low or six to seven inches from the ground and the hamper is tipped too far forward, you will need to adjust the bolts on the clevis to a higher position so the tow bars are parallel with the ground. Operate the sweeper at a ground speed that will throw materials to the back of the hamper. Under normal conditions, three miles an hour works best. The maximum operating speed for this piece of equipment is five miles an hour. For parts, visit shop.brinley.com. For questions, call Brinley Customer Service at 877-728-8224. Brinley, since 1839.